people like me. You need people like me so you can point your f***ing fingers and say, that's the bad guy. That's the bad guy. Okay, we'll start with this. On the heels of becoming WBC featherweight champion, Sky Nicholson is now eyeing a homecoming defense. Subject what we've broached at least once. I now need to speak to the people in Australia because she needs a homecoming defense quite quickly, said Hearn, speaking to Matchroom Boxing's YouTube channel. Sky barely broke a sweat in there. She was very impressive and loads more to come for her. I didn't give my food around, but one judge did. I think you're only seeing 20% of Sky Nicholson. I've seen her train and I've watched her spar where she's hurting girls repeatedly, but how can you criticize her when she's beating the number two ranked featherweight in the world in what is a mismatch? We all want excitement and I want to see her letting her hands go a bit more and stopping people. I know it's there and I know she can do it. Maybe. I'm no Monday morning quarterback. I picked Sky Nicholson to win that fight, win that fight handily behind the movement, the jab, and that Sarah Mahfoud, God bless her, in spite of being experienced, she doesn't have much firepower. Now in the fight, we saw that Sarah Mahfoud was the aggressor, and Sky Nicholson, per usual, was the defender. And she did outbox her, she boxed her socks off. Albeit from a very safe distance, carefully from the outside. Which still accents to me Sky's either inability or unwillingness to do some work mid-range to inside. Eddie Hearn is beaming over the performance, saying, but she's winning so easily and her style is a nightmare for people. That's why people like Amanda Serrano don't really want to take the fight until the money is out of control because it is a high risk. Her feet, her movement is really good. And if she can start letting her hands go because she can punch, then she's going to be even more tough to beat. With an immediate world title defense down under being Hearn's preference for Matchroom's latest world champion, he admitted, a massive Matchroom versus Queensbury fight would be in the works too against Chapman. Raven Chapman is the mandatory, and that's the fight I'll speak to George Warren about because there will be another five versus five later on in the year in the UK, and this is exactly the sort of fight we should be looking to put on. It's a very different fight from the one she just had. Sky's doing what any champion should do, and that is to chase the very best in their division, and for her right now, it's Amanda Serrano. I want to see her make a homecoming defense, then fight Raven Chapman, and then hopefully the fight with Amanda Serrano becomes big enough for her to accept it. Nicholson is now Australia's second current reigning world champion alongside Matchroom's king of cruiserweights, Jayo Pattaya. It sounds pretty good. I really do like the sound of it, she said. That was a solid victory for Sky Nicholson, but it shouldn't be blown out of proportion as Sarah Mahfoud is hardly the greatest threat to Sky the featherweight division has to offer. Not exclusive to Amanda Serrano or an Amanda Serrano fight, which we've talked about to no end. Or a Raven Chapman fight, or a Karis Ardingstall fight, in a very general sense. Sky has a very specific way of fighting a fight. She's an outside fighter, pure boxer. You notice that almost immediately. But that's not gonna work with everybody. And if you're barely throwing any punches in fights where you're clearly ahead, you're clearly winning. Girls who can't keep up with you. What happens when you're in there with one who can? When I heard my name being read out as the winner, it was exactly how I imagined it and how I've played it out in my mind leading up to the fight. It was very special, but it's not the pinnacle for me. I know this is the first of many, and there will be many more, and I'm very excited for where I'm headed. With Amanda Serrano, it's nothing personal. If you don't want to fight me, then that's fine. But let us know what you're doing with all the belts, because I want them. But if you do want to fight, I'm ready when you are. It would be a dream come true to fight in Australia. I don't think they're getting Amanda Serrano to Australia. Especially in Brisbane or the Gold Coast. I'm a Queensland girl through and through. She's an outside fighter. 
through and through. Which has its limitations beyond an Amanda Serrano fight that may or may not happen because Amanda's supposed to be going up to 140 to fight Katie Taylor for a second time. In a very general sense, being an outside fighter has its limitations. And if you're barely throwing any punches or taking any risks in a fight that you're winning with a fighter that doesn't have much of a work rate, doesn't throw many combinations, and isn't a big puncher, if you're barely throwing any punches with them, what happens with a stronger puncher or a combination puncher? What happens when you're fighting a fighter that perhaps can keep up with you and stay on you? Why do you think pure boxers sometimes gas out? They get accustomed over time to only throwing a few punches in a round. So when somebody goes in there with them and forces them to work. It doesn't have to be Amanda Serrano, it can be somebody else. Amanda's not the only hard puncher at or around these weights or the only combination puncher. There are several around featherweight. Sky's profile makes her a prime target for all of them. Moving lateral, staying on the outside and only letting go of one or two jabs at a time that's not gonna be enough to keep everybody out. Yeah, maybe Sarah Mafood. Sarah doesn't have the fastest feet, or the fastest hands, or the strongest punch, or the most prolific work rate. And I'm no Monday morning quarterback. I picked Sky Nicholson to win that fight on that predication, and I'm telling you, what she's doing right now, it may not be enough for some of these girls. The other ones. It's all good to celebrate what looked like a clear shutout for Sky Nicholson against the seasoned former champion, but never forget, that styles make fights. And if Sky Nicholson limits herself to that pure boxer base style, just moving and staying on the outside, pot shotting, eventually she's gonna run into a wall. It's happened before, it's happened to other fighters, and it could happen to her. She better get some inside game. While she has time, as she is fast becoming one of the most recognizable fighters in the featherweight division today, and that just paints more targets on her back. Men's flyweight news, I'm sure that you've heard by now, Sonny Edwards and Adrian Curiel will fight in Phoenix as part of the Estrada vs. Rodriguez bill, a fight that I'm very much excited about, and proving once again that Sonny's not just talking to be talking, when he says he wants the big fights, the real fights, he means business. I'm really excited to get the next chapter of my career underway, said Edwards, agreeing another deal with Matchroom which confirms my future here for the foreseeable future. With the belief I've got in me from the promotional team and the events I've been involved in, I know I'm in the right place. Me versus Curiel is a hell of a fight. He is a former world champion like myself, and we're both fighting to get back into world title contention. I'm going to Arizona again and fighting in front of an even bigger crowd this time, filled with passionate Mexican and American boxing fans June 29th. I'm looking forward to being back. I as well am looking forward to Sonny's return, because while I'm not big on pure boxers. Sonny's a pure boxer. Stylistically, it's not my cup of tea. I've always admired Sonny's character and his conviction, his courage, that when he says he wants the big fights, he really does mean it. He's not one of these fighters that's talking to be talking and wasting the boxing community's time. He wanted that Julio Cesar Martinez fight. It was Julio that fucked that up, not Sonny. And when he couldn't get him, he moved on to Bam. Now that he's been there and done that, he's fighting Curiel. Adrian Curiel, who said Said, I have a brand new opportunity for my career. When you lose, you learn. And I will prove it against Edwards on June 29th. If they want to make it 112 pounds, we will take it, even though this is not my weight, all because I am thirsty for revenge. Viva Mexico. This is a great fight between two men desperate to get back on top, said Hearn. Sonny was a world champion for a long time, and when that feeling goes, you want to get it back as soon as possible. Sets a good example. I have a rooting interest in Sonny Edwards' success, even if I don't know how this is going to end, because Sonny does really set a good example. You fight the big fights, you lose, you get back on a horse, you keep going. The Bam Rodriguez fight was a risky fight, and this is a risky fight, but nothing ventured, nothing gained. And if Sonny can win it, it sets a good example for the other fighters that are out there and the younger ones that are coming through that sometimes you do have to roll the dice. In order to get somewhere in the sport, you can't play it safe. If he wins, sets a good example. Adrian Curiel is going to be moving up in weight for this fight. You might be familiar with that name, Adrian Curiel. That's the same guy that fought Noni Shenga and knocked him out late last year and got knocked out by him earlier this year in February for what was the IBF light flyweight title. He's going to be moving up from light flyweight 
up to flyweight to fight Sonny Edwards, where Sonny himself reigned as IBF champion for some fights. I remember that fight. Earlier this year, the rematch between Curiel and Onishenga, and Curiel had it in the bag, man. He was winning. He was beating Onishenga like a drum. Credit to Onishenga for turning it around. Turning the tide in the 10th round and stopping Adrian Curiel on his home turf in order to become a two-time IBF light flyweight champion. I don't know what they're going to have Noni Shenga doing moving forward, but we do know Adrian. Adrian's moving up in weight, and he's fighting Sonny. Pure boxer. Whereas Adrian is more of a pressure fighter, a pressure guy, a volume guy. Both guys are coming off of losses. Sonny suffered his first in his last fight, whereas Adrian, he suffered about five losses. This ain't his first rodeo. He's no stranger to having to regroup and rebuild, rebound off a loss he's done that four times already and as stated he's an aggressive guy he's a volume guy which could make for a tough fight for sonny edwards the pure boxer the mover if he can get through this the world is his oyster and the flyweight division is there for the taking as there are not many fighters at that weight i think would have beat Sonny Edwards. Just bam. So is it possible that should Sonny succeed, he goes on another world title run in order to become a two-time flyweight champion? This is a great addition to the card. And we'll talk more about the fight as the fight date approaches. Finally, upstairs in men's super lightweight news, Ryan Garcia explains the bad-tempered amateur fights with Devin Haney. What set the stage for what is this weekend's contest in case you're not aware it's fight week who would have thunk it we made it here made it this far the bad blood between these two seems legitimate in a zone promotional video garcia insisted that even as teenagers his amateur fights with haney were split down the middle three for three were ill-disciplined and hurtful affairs we were at the junior olympic nationals we were about 14 and 15, Garcia told his own, I went at him right away, and I had him hurt and wobbling in the middle of the ring. Everybody's going crazy. One of his people in his corner came up to my dad after the fight, and he said, Devin thinks you broke his eardrum because he can't hear at all. They wanted to stop the fight. I suppose to some extent, there is a sense of familiarity there that may help Ryan Garcia, that if nothing else, he's not in unfamiliar territory. He's fought Devin Haney before. However, the Devin that he fought before isn't the Devin that's here and now. Devin is a lot farther along in his pro career than Ryan is. Even though they came up in the amateurs together, they're very different fighters in the pros. When the fight was made, I was surprised that Ryan was actually going through with it because in previous years, it didn't seem like a fight that he was interested in. I mean, in so many words, he literally said that he wasn't interested in Devin. He literally said that. Now he's talking about what happened when they were kids, how he wobbled him in the amateurs. That's just one example of what I've done to him. And he never gave me an eight count, Garcia said. They literally cut the video they were showing. Garcia also claimed that he was robbed in the tournament final against Haney in Reno in January of 2014. He actually got a point taken away for hitting me in the back of the head and still won, Garcia said. That means he would have had to kill me all of the rounds. They probably robbed me in that fight, but it's all good. I don't even care. Sometimes I still scratch my head as to why Ryan Garcia decided to go through with this one. He could have taken his time, not but two fights ago he got knocked out by Javante. I'm not complaining, I'm just saying it's counterintuitive and it's not what I expected. As most people, they don't have Ryan Garcia winning the fight for a good number of reasons, not just his erratic behavior on social media, but in a very general sense that he really isn't as far along as Devin is. Same age group. Not even telling you that Devin has the greatest resume so much as he's fought better fighters, a lot better fighters than Ryan has fought so far, and he has all of those experiences to draw from. He does. Fights with former champions in Jorge Linares and Jojo Diaz and Vasil Lomachenko, a current reigning champion in George Kimbosos, another one in Regis Progre, whereas Ryan, Ryan's never really fought somebody like that, let alone beat guys like that. He literally hasn't. That in the ring experience under the hot lights between them it's quite lopsided i'm not giving ryan much of a chance and what are we supposed to make of ryan's erratic behavior 
on social media, seemingly going through mental health issues all the while, reassuring everyone that the fight will still happen. It's here. What are we supposed to make of that in all those late night spaces? It's all the crazy stuff this kid talks about. It almost seems deliberate, ah. deliberately erratic, deliberately dysfunctional as it plays out for your viewing pleasure on social media whatever gets posted to your social media is posted deliberately thus it's what you want people to think it's what you want people to see so is all of this just ryan garcia playing possum because he wants devin to think he's been farting around this whole time but this whole time he's been getting ready maybe sean porter thinks he's ready sean porter believes ryan garcia will be locked and loaded I feel like it's too much and it doesn't make sense because that's what he wants. I think he wants everyone counting them out. I wouldn't be surprised if he bet a ton of money on himself. I've got a feeling that Ryan Garcia is going to come to the ring locked and loaded and ready to perform in ways that we haven't seen if ever. Maybe that's the strategy. That's what they're trying to do, but can they actually do it? And will it actually work? There's no version of Ryan Garcia that I've ever seen before that I would pick to beat Devin. There's no version of him. In fact, in recent years, I think he's regressed. I think he's a worse fighter now than the one that fought Luke Campbell in 2019. I think that the Ryan Garcia that we saw fight Oscar Duarte in his last fight is a worse fighter than the Ryan Garcia we saw fight Francisco Fonseca years ago. I think he was a little bit more focused then. He was taking the assignment a little bit more seriously then than he is now. That's what I think. Then where do you get that he's playing possum? Well, just because he's regressed doesn't mean he can't be playing possum. He could be playing possum because he has to. It's his only chance. The element of surprise. Convince Team Haney that you're farting around this whole time so that they don't take the fight seriously while you do. Could be what he's doing. All of his erratic shenanigans on social media seem deliberate to me because anything and everything that finds its way to your social media is what you deliberately put there. How you wish to present yourself to the people that follow you and keep up with you. So if this is what you're putting out there, it's either you're going through something or you're pretending to be going through something and those of you that follow this channel know that i never bought into ryan garcia's mental health crap i didn't buy into any of that stuff it all seemed staged rehearsed contrived to me and this might be why because he's playing possum he wants to convince devin he's just fucking around and all the late night spaces he's been hosting the juvenile silliness we've been seeing from him i think it's all a ruse i do but I still don't think it's going to matter because, as stated, there's no version of Ryan I've seen so far that I think beats Devin Haney. Put simply, I think Devin's going to keep him at bay with the jab. He's going to touch him with the jab and keep touching him with the jab. So much so, Ryan's going to get frustrated. When he does, he's going to bite down on his gum shield. He's going to try to force it and get walked into something hard. I don't rule out a knockout. I don't rule out a stoppage because this is a much better weight for Devin than 135 was. He's not killing himself to make 140. He's stronger up there. And Ryan is chinny. On top of having leaky defense and leaving his chin out there. That's how I think it's gonna go. I think Devin's gonna control him with the jab for a couple of rounds until Ryan gets frustrated. And when he does, he's gonna roll a dice and he's gonna pay for it. Still doesn't explain why he's taking his fight. Well, I mean, he already had the Javante Davis fight. There are not that many money fights left out there for Ryan.